she is still pounding that with a very emboldened Democratic minority in the House, albeit a very slim minority. Um, how's this going to all work out with you guys come tomorrow? Well, I think come tomorrow we're going to pass, uh, come Friday, we'll pass the rule for repeal. And next Wednesday, out of the House, we will pass repeal, repeal of the tax increases, of the mandates, repeal of all the additional spending, because we cannot afford a $2 trillion entitlement here. And, and she but can you can claim pass it all you want, deficit. but you can pass it all you want. That's not going to go anywhere in the Senate, right? Yeah, it'll, Certainly it'll, not go anywhere go, with the, the president. So what are you proving here? I think we set it up. The way she set up this legislation, there's 10 years of tax increases. There's six years of spending. We have a few years before these massive spending increases go into effect. What we have to do is move this legislation into the Senate, and then we have to increase and take the Senate and take the presidency in the next election. In the meantime, we've got to explain to the American public what the National Federation of Independent Business tells us. If we don't start the process of repeal, this will cost us 1.7 million jobs. The only, the only employer who's going to be hiring is the IRS, who hires uh, Nancy Pelosi's 17,000 new IRS so when she says this is going to cost jobs, Congressman, and that the CBO, which you guys quoted all the time with numbers to justify right, right, initiatives, right. et cetera, uh, says that, you know, this is going to be deficit neutral over 10 years, maybe shave 100, 130 billion off the deficit over that time. I know those are hard to ever come by with any party, ever. But if you were to tank that, she's saying you are effectively raising the deficit and you are effectively costing no. jobs. What do you say? L l let me explain why. First of all, she's predicated this on the idea that she submitted numbers to the Congressional Budget Office, which counted 10 years of taxes and six years of spending. If you go into the out years, there isn't an economist that looks at this that doesn't say, wow, how are the states going to pay for this? And how is the federal government going to remain solvent, you know, with, with, uh, with the way this is out of balance. It is only in balance for the very short term because that's when taxes right. are coming in. No, no, in I, I see where you're coming from. But could I ask that, how yeah. do you bridge this huge divide? I mean, uh, you're in this camp, and you've been very consistent. Uh, Nancy Pelosi isn't out of the camp, says don't touch it. And, and I just see this chasm. I know it's a little bit more lopsided in the House. It's essentially dead even in the Senate. Like I said, you have this Democratic president. So you've got two of the three branches of, of legislative government running against you here. What, what do you do? I mean, how do, is it just a matter of just starving this There's, thing, slowing its growth? I mean, you're not going to kill Neil, it. Neil, Neil, we can, we can withhold funding for it. I've got a bill, Dan Lundgren and I have legislation that we're going to move next week that uh, takes those 1099s that have to be sent out on every single right. expenditure over $600. We repeal that. I'm sure the Senate will have to vote for that. Remember, all spending so bills originate bit. Now, in the there House. are dozens of such features, but bit, that's what we're looking at, right? Yeah. And we have the purse strings in the House. Okay. So if we don't fund the new spending, that's where we have the leverage. Okay. Congressman, we'll be watching closely. Congratulations again on your victory and your big roles in this new Congress. Thank you again. Thank you, Neil.